my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those who are watching on TV, those who are watching on Facebook or watching on YouTube, those are three verticals that you can use to, to watch this show and, and, again, help make sure that you share this show. Realize that on Facebook and also on YouTube is a good medium for you to watch the show. Why is that? Because it's a great opportunity for you to converse with Executive Talk. That way we can answer questions, you can share, we can, we can go through things and, and uh, keep this conversation going. And we want to make sure that we're always available to make sure that we communicate with you and make sure it's live and make sure it's real to you because this, this show is real. The show is real not because I'm talking, not because it's Executive Talk, but because we're talking about the Lord's message and what he wants to deliver to you. So please keep that in mind as you're watching the program. Keep an open heart. Some things are going to hit you. Some things you may already know. Some things we probably need to think about again. And most importantly, today's show is more of a reflective show. So I, I please just rest your spirit in a reflective uh, place because this is going to this is going to require you to go back for food for thought. How is this particular moment happening for you in your business? And not only in your business, realize you're bigger than the business owner. And as more and more I do this show, one thing I start to realize is it just keeps on. This is not just your business. This is a constant thing that's happening to your daily lives. And we're more than just business owners. We're people. And that we have a responsibility as we're here on earth. And so, again, just make sure that you're looking at it from that perspective and keep, you, keep an open heart. But we're in part three of our series, uh, Your Brand Reflects Your Character. Now, when I say that, when I mention that title to you, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you immediately? How does that hit your heart? You can say, wow, you know, I, that, that makes a lot of sense. Or you can say, uh, yeah, probably not. You can be right in, the, in, in, in between. Not really for sure where you land, but this is where I want you to open up your heart is right there. Your brand reflects your character. Because how often do we think about character? We really don't. I, I've, I've come to learn, and on my way over here, what I've learned is that we can do this thing called idle, autopilot. It doesn't take much for us to just keep going and keep on going day to day. Where a lot of us are in a place where, oh, life is boring and I'm not doing anything with my life and I'm struggling here and there. A lot of people are stuck in that mode, so that means you're on autopilot. You have lost sight of where things are going for you and how much your brand reflects your character. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, Matthew 7, 17 reads, A good tree produces good fruit, a bad tree produces bad fruit. Now, that seems very simple. You can look at it and say, yeah, Maurice, I've seen that scripture, I've heard that, or this is my first time hearing it, but, you know, that sounds like duh. I get it. But how much have you thought about this scripture and how, how it affects your day to day? Let, let me tell you how much you thought about it. Have you had a bur bad circumstance in the past, and this is relating back to some of the other shows that we did pre previously? Have you had a bad circumstance or argument with somebody and left that argument saying, oh, just whatever. You realize that you actually produce fruit with that person, that that memory is stuck with that person, that memory is actually stuck with you also. The fact that I, I created that paradigm from you, you thought about it, and you're able to connect with it, helps you realize that that left fruit at that moment in time. What category are you in with that person? What is, when, they, when that person, if I was to meet that person today, what would they say? Did you produce good fruit with them? Or did you produce bad fruit? More than likely, if there was an argument, you left bad fruit. A circumstance with a customer. You're trying to sell some goods. Something went awry. It didn't go well. Well, what happens? Did you produce good fruit or bad fruit? Maybe you guys parted ways just fine. But did something, was something left there? Yes, there was, because you can remember and you can re recall it. If you can recall it, I guarantee they can recall it. So fruit is being produced every single day of your life, whether you're on autopilot or, or, or not. The worst thing about being on autopilot is you look back and you say, wow, maybe I have been producing bad fruit and you didn't even know about it. That's how impactful this is. But then again, where, where is the fruit being left? How many things are being damaged all in the meantime? 
And how does this autopilot work out for us as business owners? Well, in Proverbs 22, 1, it reads, A good name is more desirable than great riches. Now, that sounds very easy. But how often, number one, number one, do you actually remember that verse? Have you ever even heard that verse before? If you haven't, even if you have, how often do we go for a desire for great riches is better than a good name? It's very easy to kind of flip that scripture around because that's what the enemy likes to do in our lives and has us focus on what's unimportant than what's it, what is important. So this, this scripture here is saying a good name is more desirable than great riches. How much are you focused on that in your business? How easy is it for you to start to think about great riches? How often are you talking to your, to your employees about we need to sell more, 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 more? Are, are, is, that the, is that the type of leadership that you're promoting? Now, is that bad? No, you're trying to create revenue and generate revenue for the company, keep the doors open. But where is the desire? What desire are you teaching the agency or your company to operate under? Are you, are you trying to operate under a good name or great riches? Which one? A lot of business owners in this day and age are choosing great riches over the good name. Okay? There's a lot of principles out there when it comes to money. So what, who cares, next. I'm sure you guys heard that before. That's a way of actually getting through life so you don't have to feel bad about maybe some of the bad fruit that you left. Because in great riches, when you follow the principles of money, this is how you get it. You just forget what you do and don't think about it and just go for the more money and look for the next step. To be esteemed is better than silver and gold or gold. How much does that matter to you? How much does that matter to you? In this day and age, how much does that matter to you? You know, there was a certain age group and category where, yeah, that was a good brand name. It still, it still applies today, but that used to be like priority is the brand name. As generations have gone forward, it has that, that great name and understanding the value of it has dwindled down tremendously. That has no longer become an importance. Great riches has always been a major importance to, to society and is getting more so now. And that seems to be the direction that we're headed in. Is that the direction God wants us in based on the scripture? Well, let's, let's do this. How powerful is your name? Doesn't your name come with judgments? Doesn't your name come with decisions? Doesn't your name come with gossip? Now, Maurice, what does that mean? Let me go ahead and throw a scenario at you um, in a business setting or just in the personal setting. You can mix this however you want because I don't care if you're a business owner now or if you're planning to become a business owner. You have done this and you've had this conversation about somebody some, at some point. And if you're a business owner, you've had something called a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, you want to go have a business lunch with your, one of your pr people that you, that you met, and that person's going to ask you, hey, how's business going? How, how's, uh, how's, and this is this person talking to me, you know, how's your, how's your TV show going? Oh, you know what, I've lear I'm learning quite a bit. Um, the show's really stretching me quite a bit, and it's just been amazing, and I, I love it. You know, right now I'm looking for, you know, business insurance, and I, I, I met this gentleman and I'm making up this name, Don Johnson. So Don Johnson, if you're actually watching this show, I'm not talking about you because I didn't know you were going to be watching. But nonetheless, Don Johnson, I met with him. And, you know, I met him at a networking event, and I needed some business insurance. And I don't know, he just kind of seemed like the guy that, I don't know, maybe I, I can do some business with him. Now, the guy sitting across from me could do this little number. Okay, yeah, you, you, you're talking about Don, Don with the curly hair and kind of tall and, I don't know, kind of quirky? Uh, yeah, oh, you, so obviously you met him. What's happening in that conversation right now? Okay, we're, we're, already, we're already gossiping. I'm talking about business, but now our conversation has shifted to gossip. 
Well, you know, Maurice, I, I, I oh, how do I put this? Um, I mean, yeah, I understand you need business insurance. He's just, he's just a little different, all right? That's, that's the nicest way that I can put it. Now, different is code for, oh my gosh, beware, don't do business with him, so on and so forth. You know the, the, the code words, all right? So now, what, where am I at in this conversation? I'm in judgments. Now I'm starting to think, huh. And remember, I have not met with Don Johnson yet. I have not met this gentleman yet. I just met him. I know that I need some services from him, his business insurance, and I'm going to meet with him next week. Now, what am I going to the table with already? I'm already started to make, I've already gossiped about him. Our conversation has shifted into judgments, and now I'm starting to make decisions on Don Johnson without even meeting them, meeting him or sitting down with him and getting to really understand. He may have been quirky to me also, but I didn't understand what that quirkiness was. Maybe it was just me, and I'll, I'll make that presentation at the, at the moment. But then once I'm having this conversation, the conversation has, has shifted from gossip to judgments. Now I'm starting to make decisions before this gentleman can actually even offer me the service. Now, how powerful is your name in that scenario? I want you to think about it in your, in your time. Have you had that personal conversation where you said, oh, you should go meet XYZ? Oh, God. in business, the same scenario. What has it done for you? How powerful is the name? Just the name Don Johnson registered everybody, all the experiences. All the experiences are based off your name. Again, all I had to do is say one name, and what happened is I can think about the past experience, I, my past experiences, I met him. The gentleman that I'm sitting with at the, at the lunch table it's talking about the past experiences based on actually interacting before I did. So in both scenarios, that name, Don Johnson, has triggered both of us to feel a certain way just based off of experience. So your name has already meant something. It's already, it's already bore fruit. That's how powerful your name is, and that's how powerful your, your brand is. So your, your brand as business owners and as a solopreneur, it really gets, it really gets connected closely. And why does it connect, get connected closely? Well, your, your business is, you're the solopreneur. So as soon as I say I have a business, it doesn't matter. We're still talking about you specifically. I may talk about your business name afterwards, but I'm talking about you specifically. Now, you get further and further removed based on the fact of the size of your, your company. So if your company's, I don't know, 200 people deep, well, you can get farther removed, but now I'm talking about your, the name that you named your company, and as soon as I find the owner, I'm thinking you as an owner do, does the whole business like that. So your name carries a lot of weight. That is your branding. And it is based off the experience. <clears throat> they go hand in hand. Your experiences and judgment go hand in hand. I make decisions based on the experiences that I have with you and all my judgments come flowing from there. Now, should we be judging? No. That's what the, that's what the word says. Okay, if you judge, a, judge another, you remember about the plank in your own eye. Okay, that's the scripture. So, let's take it to the next level when it comes to branding. How about social media? Is that part of your brand? Does that even matter? Oh, yeah, I put my company on social media. You know, I um, make sure I, I post every day and I do all this stuff for branding and marketing. Okay, that's good. That's good. That, that, that does a lot. Okay, you can attract new people and get people drawn into your, into your name. Well, let's talk about this because on Facebook it says, what's on your mind? I know we've, we've posted so much on Facebook, so on and so forth, and I'm not talking about Facebook. I'm talking about the opportunity on Facebook. It says, what's on your mind? Well, how is it, what's on your mind is the fact that you're able to type it is actually your spoken word. Did you know that? You're actually speaking about what's on your mind. You're just typing it in to make sure people kind of understand what's on your mind. 
How is that doing to your brand? Have you ever looked? Have you ever met a person outside of at a networking event? And you're like, yeah, I want to give you a call. And maybe you look them up on social media because that is the new thing. A lot of employers are looking at looking up uh, employees, potential employees on their Facebook and their social media sites. Why? Well, guess what? I want to find out about your name. How does your name work? How, how do you act outside of this company? If I do business with you, how do you really act? Because again, the opportunity to let people know how upset you are about something is there on Facebook. Because it says, what's on your mind? Well, I'm actually starting to make a different decision. I may want to do business, but then I see your Facebook post. I'm like, huh, that person seems, um, mm. I don't know, angry? Or what is all this stuff that is being posted every single day? Experiences and judgments. When I first experienced you, it was amazing. Because that's why I met you, I wanted to do business with you. But then as soon as I went to your social media, guess what? There was, I started getting to that place of judgments. So social media has become a part of your branding. But again, that autopilot that I was discussing earlier, how many of us are on it? And don't think that that stuff is going to come back to, to haunt us at some point. It is there. Proverbs 18.21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. I want you to think about that scripture. It's very easy to sit here and say, well, the tongue has the power of life and death. That's another autopilot thing that if you don't understand how powerful the tongue is, you'll be on autopilot and say whatever. Okay? Those who love it, okay, the key word is love it. And when you love in something, you believe in something, okay? When you love something, you believe in it. You will eat of its fruit. So no matter where you're at, if you're speaking life, you'll eat of its fruit based off of it coming from your tongue. If, you, if you're operating from death or you're speaking death, you will eat of its fruit. What do you think you're speaking? What do you think your social media posts are, are, are operating from? They, may, they might be operating from a place of death. And the fruit of death comes with these three things. Rejection becomes an issue. The feeling of unworthiness becomes an issue, and you're operating in a place of doubt. And if you're operating in those places, you're going to feel it, and then you're going to speak it, and then you're going to present it. It's going to become, it's going to develop part of your branding. I'm going to start to associate your business with these things. Now, let me be clear. I don't understand what you're going through. I just understand what I'm experiencing. I don't know that you're in death right now. I don't know that you, you're, you're struggling with all this stuff. But if I start to see your posts, I may start to see, wow, there's some rejection things going on. There's some feeling of unworthiness. There's some doubt. These start to re-identify your brand to me and how, my, how, how I'm experiencing, experiencing you. That's how impactful you, you, you are. And that's the legacy that you're, that you're leaving. So when you're, as a business owner, you're looking to make the next move. You're looking to make the next sale. And you're trying to figure out, man, why is this month, why am I having such a hard month? Why is this business struggling? You realize you're leaving seeds all over the place? You're leaving breadcrumbs all over the place that you're, not, that you're un, un, unaware of. When you're operating on auto, autopilot, 10 people have already experienced you in a way that you didn't, that was unintended. And because I've experienced you in a way that's unintended, I've already made a decision on the next time on, on, on your business. It may prevent me from reaching out to you when it's not your product or service, but it might be you. It's your brand name that you're positioning in my, in my spirit and how I'm registering you. Alter character creates a new reality. <clears throat> now, what's my reaction if I'm eating of this fruit? A new reality in eating of the fruit of an altered character is a hard pill to swallow. There's nothing worse in your life than to operate off of alter character and try to eat of its fruit. Because all the results are always going to be 
um, I don't know, nothing. It's never going to feel good. You always will reach for more. And this is all, again, specific off of branding. And as you're trying to, because all branding helps you in that development component. How are you going to develop your mission and vision? Okay, it's based off your branding. And we, we tend to forget that your branding has every connection because, again, it's your mission, your vision, and then your branding statement. Who are you? How are you going to present yourself to the world to make sure people understand that this is your mission and that you're qualified to actually do that for the world? That's three components that you're, that you're communicating to the, to the buying public and that you're leaving for yourself. And so let's talk about some, some major components to your brand identity and as you're developing. You have your business name. That's where your branding starts. That's, that's your name. Again, earlier in the scripture, we talked about a name is more precious than great riches, right? So come back to the brand identity, your business name. It means a lot. It means everything. You have your product and service. That's, that's the second part to this whole battle of business ownership. You got to have a product in order to be a business. What do you own? What product are you selling? What service are you providing? The delivery of product and services. That is where, this is, this is a huge part. Because right here, the business name and product and service that you offer, you can song and dance and promote that all day. And that's where we think branding lands. We think, oh, well, here's my business name. Here's the product and service. Let's just market that. And that's how we'll get the money. Well, next phase of that is, how am I going to deliver this product and service? It all includes the brand. <clears throat> now, this is where it even gets more sticky. You get into that quadrant of customer service. Now, customer service is, seems like it's easy. Oh, just call. You know how the conversation go. Call me whenever you need anything. I, I will be there to help you. We'll just take care of it, and we'll get right through it, and we'll do this together. Okay? So that's that customer service conversation that you had when you try to sell your product and services. Because, again, that is part of the conversation that you're able to leave behind after the, the, the delivery of the product or service. They start to go hand in hand. They're intertwined. This is a brand experience that people have had with you. Now you're starting to get into the experience component of your business. Now, ongoing support. This is another big component of your business. Why is ongoing support so, so huge? Because now that you have your business name and your product and service, and now that you have delivered the product, and now that you have said that you will help and be customer service and provide them with all that communication and so on and so forth and be there when you need them, now ongoing support. How does that affect your long term? These all go into your brand name, that how people experience your whole business model. And it always hits back at the business name. All four of these other components. Now, earlier in our last shows, we were talking about that double, double lifestyle. Just to re reflect and remember what I was talking about, your double life is where you try to present your created brand. But your true brand is your true character is your current place, and that's that altered character where you're struggling with some things. You have, you, have, you have some pains going on, and there's some key components to you. You can be inconsistent. You can be not dependable, not dependable, untrustworthy, selfish. You can be inconsiderate. But your creative brand, in order to actually run this business, has to be, so people can buy from you, um, trustworthy, servant, dependable, unselfish, and considerate. That's your presentation. Now, why, is that, why, why am I connecting the two? Because it's hard to have this double lifestyle and be anchored in both departments where you're presented this, this brand character as to how we're going to be for you, but then have the struggle with the inconsistent, not dependable, untrust, untrustworthy, selfish, and inconsiderate because there it becomes a clash that happens to your day-to-day -day experience as a business owner. Why? Anybody who says they're not high maintenance is not telling the truth. Okay, let's just be clear about that. Everything and everybody is high maintenance. If you have a business, it is high maintenance. If you have you, you're high maintenance. If you're in a relationship, 
It's high maintenance. You have a dog. It's high maintenance. The only thing that's not high maintenance is the fish. Okay? That's it. Well, I want you to think about this. This high maintenance, how does that create wear and tear on you if you're struggling with being inconsistent? And this thing is required high maintenance. Well, you start to lose sight of your whole entire brand. You cannot do this whole piece of the pie. You cannot, you cannot possibly do it well at all. You can touch on it, but you can't do well at all. So what you have to do is you have to kind of pick and choose what you're going to do well at. And it starts to eat away immediately at your business model and your brand. Okay, so what we tend to do in this circumstance is we go for our business name, we go for our product and service, and delivery of product and the delivery of it. Why is that? Why do we choose those three? Because money is right at the center of it. That's how we start making money. If it doesn't feel foreign to us. It's a good experience. You feel like you're in business even though that you're struggling with the whole brand. 1 Timothy says, 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. You find yourself in many griefs as, a, griefs as a business owner when you start to lose sight of your brand, when you go on autopilot. Once you start to compromise this, you're in this place right now. You're right scripturally dead at a dead end. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. Don't you understand you can be a slave to money? You have to be obedient to the principles of that money. That's what we're, we're not really taking in. Yelp, BBB, Angie's List, they're in the branding business. Okay, we're going to talk about that in our next show and reviews are the fruit of your name. I want you to ponder on everything that we have discussed today because that's everything with your next move in your business. It means something every single day. Your brand is bigger than your company right now. You can be a one, one man or woman show, but it doesn't matter. Your brand has so much power. Think about it. In our next show, we're gonna discuss that power. We're gonna talk about those reviews and what it's doing to your business and how it's showing up. I want to make sure that you guys, again, share this. This is important information. We can come together and talk about it. But actually, in the meantime, I have to get back to work. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time in the next show. Have a good day. Thank you.